The Zach's rank, value, momentum, growth and income all factor into Zach's rank buys. The holiday shopping season, a time when a lot of consumers are out there using credit cards for their purchases. I don't know if that's why our strategist, Ryan McQueenie, decided to zero in on a couple, but it provided a good lead-in, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> One of a couple reasons, certainly, um, like the retailers, the apparel makers, uh, for these financial services, financial transactions processors. This is definitely the busiest period of the year as everyone's out there swiping. Yep. We're, of course, talking about the legacy players, the Giants here, Visa and MasterCard. Okay. Um, the reason why this was on my mind this morning, though, uh, was a story that I was reading on the way into work today um, about a company called Robinhood. Uh, this is best known for its free stock trading app. It offers commissions, tra commissions free trades on individual stocks, ETFs. They've mm -hmm. been doing options now for a little bit. Started as a mobile app, now has a desktop app. Uh, very, very fast growing app. One of the fastest growing apps in finance. Um, certainly uh, one of these interesting new finance tech startups. Um, that have been really disrupting the industry and with commissions free trading you can see why that would be a disruption sure. um, Robinhood is now going to be offering according to today's developments a checkings and savings account feature is going to be rolling out here soon and it's going to be offering three percent returns on checkings and savings accounts which is 30 or 40 times what you would get at, at a traditional bank the only one off the top of my head that I know that is comparable is Marcus, which is Goldman Sachs' consumer bank, mm -hmm. offers, I believe, 2%. Um, so this is certainly another segment of this financial sector that Robinhood is intending to disrupt. And when you looked at uh, the press release today, it's MasterCard debit cards that Robinhood is offering to go along with these checkings oh. and savings account. I would say, as an aside, they look really cool. You have, like, four different options of skins to get on them. Um, they definitely look like a, a cool 2018 debit card, um, but it's MasterCard label right there on the on the top of the card. And I thought that was interesting that Visa, MasterCard, these legacy transactions processors are developing and evolving alongside their industry to become kind of cutting edge fintech companies as well, sure. involved in these new ideas, these new features. And so I thought, let's use this moment now that I'm thinking about this to check in on Visa and MasterCard in terms of their growth and income prospects. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll start with the income side of things. This is Visa's dividend history. As we can see, just on this first page, dating back to September of 2016, really solid track record of increasing the dividend. We're now at 25 cents a share in the most recent quarterly payout. I believe the yield is a little bit under 1% at today's current share price levels, so it's not a crazy high yield. Um, obviously, we've seen some growth and momentum investors come into these stocks over the last few years. Visa has one of the strongest uh, growth, momentum, price consensus, EPS surprise charts um, that I can think of. Uh, so that could help explain a little bit why the yield is a little bit muted, but in terms of, you know, quality history of raising the dividend, um, which is something any income investor is going to want to see. Really strong track record from Visa. Same thing going over here in MasterCard, though. As you can see, um, going from $0.19 cents per quarter uh, back in 2016 all the way up to $0.33 cents here, if I can draw my line straight. In the most recent announcement, uh, that's also a really solid history. And again, we can see that's consistent, adding three, per, or three cents here, adding another three cents, adding, what is that, eight cents here. That's a pretty strong dividend hike. Um, so we certainly like the history from both of these stocks. Um, and, you know, the, the, I think the yield on, on MasterCard is a little bit lower right now. Pretty marginal difference. Again, um, not the highest yielding stocks that you'll see. Um, but certainly with the history, something an income investor might be interested in to get some exposure here. Uh, the other side of this coin, this growth and income conversation, is then the growth. So I thought let's take a look at the earnings and revenue estimates. Sure. Um, so we can see here back to Visa. Um, we, we have some decent growth opportunities here, 15% uh, for the fiscal year ending September 2019, the current fiscal year, that's on 10.8% revenue growth. 
And that's really consistent too. We have early estimates for the following fiscal year into September 2020, 16% rev earnings growth on top of that 15% growth we're supposed to get this year, 11% revenue growth on top of the almost 11% we're supposed to get this year. Um, that is really strong and consistent double digit percentage growth. Um, another thing that for anybody with this growth and income perspective, you're gonna like to see those numbers, especially for a company that's as ubiquitous as Visa and is already as large as Visa to be able to get those types of growth rates. Really impressive stuff. Um, if Visa, we Visa has an earnings report coming up in February of 2019, right? Yeah, so they're they're on one of a bit of a weird fiscal calendar, but yeah, yeah um, they will be reporting here within the next couple months. It's crazy, we're almost already to, to yeah. 2019. I know. Um, and as we can see, if we flip over here to the earnings estimates for MasterCard, um, same kind of story. Um, really strong double-digit percentage revenue gains in the current and next fiscal year and that's coming with really strong earnings growth this year pretty impressive earnings growth again for the next fiscal year um, not a ton just off of the growth and in income to differentiate these two stocks um, obviously there's a lot more to this conversation but I just thought it was interesting how um, they do have run a very similar business are both looking to get into these new fintech disruptions of the industry and are both relatively reasonable growth and income options. So all good stuff as far as you're concerned. Yeah, it's pretty solid. And I think uh, the people who do own these stocks would tell you, why wouldn't I want to have Visa in my portfolio? I have three Visas in my wallet every single day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, And if you're with a bank that's using MasterCard, same type of situation, same type sure. of argument. All right. Well, do you own either? I do not, and we have neither currently in the Income Investor Service. All right. Thanks for that. Don't forget, more stock information is always on our website, zax.com, and on the podcast page of zax.com is where you can also find Ryan's Tech Talk Tuesday podcast and his free lunch uh, streaming video program Monday through Thursdays available on most streaming services as well. With Ryan, I'm Terry Ruffalo.